Welcome to HealthyAyurveda.com. I'm Dr. Mike Dollywall, Vedic Sage. Today we'll discuss the topic of blood. And as we know, blood is a complex medium which allows for the transport of nutrients and the transport of oxygen, transporting these nutrients to all cells of the body. That said, today we're going to focus on Raktadatu, that which most closely resembles the hematocrit portion of blood. We can say that Rasa and Raktadatu are integrated and function together. And to make a better distinction between Rasa and Raktadatu, if we were to obtain a blood sample and spin it down, Blood would separate into fractions based upon particle size, density, and specific gravity. For example, the upper clear solution of fractionated blood is plasma, which contains water, dissolved proteins, glucose, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and electrolytes, all of which is nourishing to cells, hence the function of rasadatu being pridinam, or that which is nourishing. The middle separation contains mainly granulocytes, such as white blood cells, and this provides the immune function of blood, perhaps best resembling the function of ogis. And the bottom portion of fractionated blood is hematocrit, which mostly contains red blood cells and the hemoglobin within red blood cells allows for the blood's oxygen carrying capacity. This allows for cellular respiration and the formation of ATP, which is the energy currency required for life, hence why Raktadatu is considered jivanam. The end product of digestion is aharasa, which forms rasadatu. Ayurveda describes rasa as being prinanam, that which is pleasing and that which brings satisfaction and nourishment to the entire body. And one of the byproducts of rasadatu are precursors required for the formation of raktadatu, meaning a portion of rasadatu refines and transforms into raktadatu. The function of raktadatu is jivanam, or that which helps to sustain life. And we'll talk about this in in greater detail. Meanwhile, Ayurveda poetically describes the color of blood as being the color of gold, which is purified by fire, the color of blood being that of a red lotus, and the color of blood as being similar to the bright red color of a firefly. Raktadatu is also described in terms of the five great elements. For example, earth element gives the distinct smell and odor of blood. Water allows for the fluidity of blood required for circulation. Fire provides the red color of oxygenated blood. And ether and air allows for palpable flow throughout the entire body due to the mobile quality of vayu and the subtle qualities of ether. Raktadatu can also be described in terms of qualities. For example, snigdam, or the unctuous and smoothness of blood, helps blood circulate throughout the entire body, reducing the viscosity. Guru, or the heaviness, explains how the hematocrit portion of blood actually settled down to the bottom of a centrifuge that was spun based upon differing densities and specific gravity. Blood also can be characterized as sweet yet salty, which makes sense because glucose, which is obviously sweet and certain electrolytes contained within blood such as sodium and chloride will obviously form salts. The properties of Raktadatu are similar to that of Pitta dosha, and because of that that which increases Pitta dosha will tend to increase and aggravate Raktadatu. The functions of Raktadatu are that which provides strength, complexion, happiness and longevity. The principal organs of Rakta Vahasrotas are the liver and spleen. And as an embryo, Raktadatu is formed in the yolk sac of the liver and spleen. And because of this, Rakta and Pitta have a special affinity for these very organs. Therefore, as we'll see in conditions of increased or aggravated Rakta, we'll see inflammatory and bleeding conditions which may involve the liver and or spleen. After all, isn't it interesting that all clotting factors, except for factor 8, are formed in the liver. Clotting factors which regulate the coagulation cascade, which controls how we clot and the very mechanism which stops bleeding. Therefore, pitta, affecting rectodatu, may cause bleeding conditions. 
Similarly, the spleen is a filtration system for blood, and aggravated pictic conditions may lead to the sequestration of blood within the spleen, causing splenomegaly. So just to reiterate, recta pitta is characterized by bleeding from various parts of the body. Vitiation of blood may cause various inflammatory conditions such as burning sensation, inflammation, abscess formation, which are signs and symptoms of aggravated pitta and Rectodatu. Such conditions may occur due to the same factors which increase or affect pitta dosha, such as hot and spicy food, alcohol, sour foods, feelings of anger, hate, and envy. And we'll talk about this all in greater detail in the next videos discussing increased and decreased rectodatu. Okay guys, hope this has provided some insight into rectodatu. In the next video, we'll cover recta vridhi and then cover recta kashai. Hope you've enjoyed. And until next time, be well.